Welcome to the Modular Clubhouse. Um, this is Jesper, and today we have a very special guest joining us all the all the way from the west coast of the US. We are joined by the one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend, Lenny from After Later Audio. Uh, Lenny, first of all, thank you so much for joining. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me on. Uh, certainly not a, a regular Discord user, so it's... Uh, both a, a, a tour in from an interview perspective, but then also through a, <laughs> through a whole new galaxy that looks like I'm going to get to explore after this. <laughs> oh, absolutely! And as I um, as I told you before, I've come to really embrace the uh, the Discord community, and there are so many. I I, I think I've only uh, scratched the uh, scratched the top of the iceberg. Uh, and I've joined like 10 different Eurorack or at least modular synthesizer um, servers on here. And there are ones that are very, very energetic. There are ones that are a bit more laid back. But what you do see is that a lot of the uh, Eurorack brands and makers have their own server where you can go in and, and ask people. Uh, for instance, the one from, for instance, Winterbloom is very active uh, where you can directly interact with people like the. Uh, and and others of course as well and just ask and, and, and discuss I, I love that approach to uh, to your rack and um so could you tell us a bit more so how's, how's your day been up until now so currently uh due to my complete misunderstanding and interpretation <laughs> of <laughs> daylight savings time and i do have to apologize uh for uh the, the mix up there so how's your day been up until today anything special happen or no, no, no. Uh, well, I'm actually in Barcelona, so um, it has uh, been a, a fairly unusual day. I was able to get some uh, time off work, and uh, we awesome. actually went up to Figueres today, uh, tour, tour the Dali Museum. Um, so yeah, so it's been a very unusual day. Uh, I did not know that, so I'm actually bothering absolutely. you during your holiday, or... Uh... <laughs> Are you in there just for, for no, work or pleasure? No, not bothering. We had we had we've had this plan for like two months. Yeah, we? absolutely. But I was totally unaware that you was you were going to be in the same time zone, man. So that's absolutely fantastic. So uh, how long are you going to be in in Barcelona, <laughs> if I may ask? Uh, yeah, I know we're here for another two days, um, and then I'm actually going to London and. Uh, my, my wife Clarissa is here with me, and she's actually going to go visit a friend in Lisbon. Nice. Um, and I'll go see a bunch of shows while I'm in while I'm in London, um, mm -hmm. and then we'll um, eventually meet back up in Seattle and actually uh, get back to kind of more hands-on day-to-day <laughs> running oh, of the that's business. Great. But there's no stepping away from a small business. You're, you're, you're always you're always on call when that's happening. So responding to emails uh, each day. I can imagine, I can imagine. And then you're right down there in Barcelona, which is, of course, quite a, a big difference when you're then planning to go to London or, uh, or anywhere else. Uh, has Lon uh, sorry, has Barcelona been your first stop in Europe or have you, have you been traveling uh, to other places as well? No, this is the first stop. Um, yeah, so then it'll be, for me, it'll be London, uh, Reykjavik. I'm actually going to do a couple of days in Reykjavik and then stop by and see my siblings in New York on the way home for a couple of nights, catch one more show in New York uh, before then I head home uh, back to Seattle. Awesome. That's great. That's absolutely fantastic. And then, of course, if doing, you go Doing from, a little tour. Yeah. Ha have some, have some uh, uh, time off that I needed to burn. Um, so uh, just uh, trying to get out and enjoy it. And uh, what For better sure. place than to start in Barcelona? Of course, so if, uh, it's been a while since I've been there, and it's always it's always yeah, great I, to to go there. Absolutely. With with the corporate job, I did a lot of tour, or a lot of travel to London and to Cambridge. Um, so I was trying to get in something different, uh, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I have my favorite activities in London, um, and so certainly looking. Uh, Looking mm -hmm. forward to getting a, a weekend in there before I head back. So awesome! And any uh, any special shows you're going to see in London, or are you just going to see what's out there? Um, I am going to go see To Kill a Mockingbird, and then uh, Dear Evan Hansen are the two I'm going to see there. And I'm going to see Plaza Suite in New York. The Matthew Broderick, Sarah Jessica Parker, mm -hmm. are, uh just just opened that. Um, I think it was like three weeks ago in New York. So I'm pretty excited to go see the two of them. Uh, 
let alone uh, in New York. Anyways. Awesome. Oh, that's great. That's great. It's still on my list to yeah. actually see uh, one of the, to actually see a show on on Broadway. Actually, um, last time we were in New York, we were we were this close to do that, but eventually, well, it didn't it didn't work out. But uh, that's a great plan you've got lined up for yourself. Then, awesome. <laughs> Is that something that you? Yeah, yeah, It's it's. Yeah, this is a, a one in every you know kind of five year, ten year trip. Uh, this isn't a very common occurrence. I just don't. I ended up with about six weeks off uh, from Microsoft uh, for various reasons, um, but um, it is. Uh, it, it, I um, feel very fortunate to be able to take advantage of that all that time off and just yeah. go and travel. Um, but certainly, I mean, we only booked the trip, like I, I think about three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's been, cause we were waiting to see what happened, you know, with all, all the numbers around the world oh, and yeah. trying to see if we felt safe doing it, um, and decided, um, essentially not going to get many more chances like this with all the time off. Uh, so decided just to go ahead and do it. So, well, absolutely. And I think that you are just ahead of the masses because I think that people have just like you've been have been hesitant to book any of those kind of travel and then um yeah i, th I think that the, the 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 real well big number of people traveling again again will just start in a couple of weeks because you see everything opening up across europe um where we are actually talking even in the netherlands right now that in probably like a week and a half they're gonna release all 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 sorts of uh restrictions so you don't even need to have a uh, a vaccination passport yeah. or a negative test in in a week and a half. Uh, how, how's that? How's that? How's that actually in the U.S. Yeah. currently? Is there any outlook for that as well? Or well, well it's it's um, been very local. There, there's a lot of local decisions happening within the U.S. Um, yeah. So within Washington State, uh, as an example, uh, that's right. I know the most of what's going on, but the uh, mask mandate just got lifted uh, for a bulk of of the uh, uh community so it's now uh it's 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 just a it's a different world we haven't we, it happened while we've been here um yeah. so um it's it's uh fresh news but it, it always um I and mean, it just sparks all kinds of uh emotions and feelings and nerves um mm -hmm. on both sides right um, absolutely of, yeah. you know folks that are that are supportive of mass and folks that and, and, and folks that are not um and so um it's just it's a new chapter and it's something we're all gonna have to you know got to take that next step absolutely and in the meantime we've got other things to worry about as well on the global stage <laughs> to, yeah we, for sure okay. I, I will say I was just I was uh, um, just watching a, a, a comedy bit by Aziz Ansari and um, I was I've just been realizing that you guys have a, a much more sophisticated COVID vaccination system here, whereas in the in the US, right, we've got these white card stock pieces of paper with with black lines on them, um, which is our <laughs> official documentation, something that you could do with a with a, a ballpoint pen and a and an index card oh, yeah. if you really wanted to. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, it's been it's not, been quite, not quite a much thing security in our uh, vaccination strategy. Yeah. Well, anyway. and I think uh, the one thing but modular. That, Let's talk about yeah. modular. Yeah. <laughs> Let's leave that all behind. So <laughs> absolutely no worries. And we'll uh, probably come back to that as well. Uh, just to be st absolutely, absolutely certain. So uh, don't worry about these sort of tangents. The last couple of shows we've had tangents going into high tech cuisine up until uh, deep philosophy uh indian uh, sp uh very specific uh, secular religions and all across the board so don't worry about those those make this show uh well this show essentially so tell me a bit more awesome. lenny on, on, on how what was lenny like growing up from a musical point of view Growing up, interesting question. Um, yeah. So I I started into music. I mean, from a kind of you know, high school years, those kind of formative years, 
Mm -hmm. Um, I was very much into, you know, ministry front 242. I lived in Chicago, so I was right by Wax Tracks Records. Nice. Um, And so I spent um, a lot of the kind of very, uh, those are kind of the, you know, the first bands and kind of first musical interests going to see Nine Inch Nails at the Metro in Chicago, you know, with like 2000 people Um, that, you know, those are kind of the, the, the early formative years, if you will. Um, but then uh, once I went to college um, is where I discovered um, really ambient music originally mm-hmm. um, and listening to the orb um, and uh, um, found a lot of um, great chill and just it was just a totally different right i mean it's totally different than ministry right going to listen to you know little fluffy clouds from the orb (laughs) Um, so it was a great contrast for me but also kind of goes into my personality which um i'm i'm either uh kind of in it or wanting to chill and not 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 think about anything um so um i i uh um, started into DJing then actually with ambient music and doing kind of after parties or pre-parties um, and playing records for folks. And then um, uh, I was going to school in Flint, Michigan at the time. And mm. so a lot of activity then was down in Detroit um, as well as then back in Chicago. Right. So I had these two different house music influences on me. Um, and I actually had, uh, I ended up evolving into playing house music from, from ambient music. Um, I started getting, you know, slowly, slowly a bit more dancier until where then I was for a long while just playing, uh, I mean, for most of my DJ times, I was playing just straight up house music, but I would carry very, a very wide variety so that I could play. I mean, when I played in Indiana, um, which is between, uh, Chicago and Detroit. I'd play in Indiana. I'd get really confused on what to play. So I wouldn't know what the crowd <laughs> would be expecting. Uh, but then when I go to Chicago, I'd play, you know, straight up Chicago house, you know, kind of deep, soulful, um, yeah. uh, almost kind of jazzy um, uh, uh, music. And then going into um, Detroit um, with, you know, Richie Houghton and um, uh, Jeff Mills and you know that 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 group. Um, I would play a bit more a bit more acid house uh, style music um, once I was uh, in those uh, in, in those uh, D- Detroit raves. Mm-hmm. And 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 yeah. do you still have that connection to to bands like Nine Inch Nails, Ministry? Uh, the more industrial metal kind of sounds as well. Is that something where you said, well, that was my my, my musical genesis, uh, but you've grown beyond that? Or is that still some, does that still have a part in your life currently? It it does. I actually don't listen to too much music these days um, for a variety of reasons. I've been kind of analyzing that recently, but um, I can't really focus when there's music on anymore. Um, and so I need, I need to focus a lot because I got two jobs. Yeah. Um, and so I don't end up actually uh, listening uh, to, uh, to very much music. But I will say um, that uh, um, I think if, you, if anybody's played or heard any of the sounds coming out of Dirty Laundry, um, you might feel like there's a little bit of tie in there with some of those earlier days um, and uh, the kind of much more gritty noise based sound, um, which is kind of what, what I mean, that's what Dirty Laundry will do just by itself. So anyway, absolutely. Um, certainly, c- certainly some some correlation there for sure. No, and it's just uh, the reason why I'm asking is uh, it's um, it's just interesting that I hear from a lot of people, especially in the maker scene. Uh, where people say, okay, well, I've been really big into um, metal, punk, uh, the, the really DIY uh, music, uh, musical genres, uh, and then eventually evolved into uh, electronic music, but still having that same DIY approach to it. And then they became makers. So I'm, I'm interested to see if there's any sort of common theme amongst yep. uh, amongst amongst uh, amongst makers it might be yeah yeah so and i actually took right i mean i there's a long distance between those dj years mm-hmm. um and then when i got into modular right so when i when i was djing i actually i mean i, I was this was back in you know the 90s so i mean this was all about the the xox box right so 909 808 303 i mean yeah I, 
th those were all all in my uh, a collection, and then I started playing live sets for a bit. Um, and I, I did that and realized I was never going to make it as a, as a starving artist. It wasn't, wasn't, <laughs> uh, or shall we say it wasn't providing me the lifestyle that I was looking for. Um, and so it was fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, but also realized that, um, I was also going to burn out. I mean, I, I, this was, you know, playing shows at, you know, eight, eight in the morning after throwing a party you know, that started at 10, went till five and then going to an after hours and running that. And I mean, that, that, that lifestyle gets really old really quick. Um, and so, <laughs> well, is um, it the life I, or is it you that's coming, becoming old then very Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you kind of age three days and every day at that point. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so um, I, th this is when I discovered uh, all this kind of corporate work and I discovered that people paid people money to write software. Um, and <laughs> then I essentially joined into this uh, software rat race and was in that for a long time, still am in it. Um, and then um, I was in, I was in a, a car accident, right? And so then that's yeah. what started me, ended up starting me back into, um, uh, synthesizers and back into music and this focus because I had all this time and I couldn't do anything. Right? I couldn't be on computers. I couldn't read books. It's like I couldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's when I just started soldering. Um, and then as I started feeling better and getting through the the concussion from that, yeah. um, I actually started to you know kind of play with them and learn more and um, yeah. And so that there was this you know kind of 20, 25 year gap almost, or I guess it'd be 20 year gap. Uh, roughly um, from mm -hmm. those kind of early days and what I was doing then and then being able to kind of continue that um, momentum now. Absolutely. And, uh, and uh, so would you be then saying that um, the whole soldering, the whole creative approach that you took on there was, was indeed quite therapeutical for you or was it just to keep your, um, your mind well active and nimble during that time. Um, it was really, it, it was really just to be able to do something. I mean, yeah. I'm a, I'm a person that likes to create things. Um, I mean, that's what I do in the software space, right? Is I mean, we're yeah. always, we're always creating uh, new products there. Um, I was uh, restoring Marantz units uh, for a long while um, before that. So I got in handy with the soldering iron and, you know, desoldering and repair and components and all, 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 all those things, um, but hadn't really gotten into uh, building new, um, and so, um, I, uh, um, it, it was really helpful to occupy the time, yeah. um, but then also have something that then I could use and it was kind of going through that first process, right? So I used the, I forget the dude's name, French, um, electric, I think it is that does the Yocto, um, and, uh, Nava, the 808 and 909 replicas. Those were the first things that I actually soldered. Um, was because I wanted an 808 and a 909 again, and I looked on eBay, and I was like, I'm not paying that money for <laughs> <laughs> devices that are so far out of spec, it's ridiculous. Um, and, I mean, the components they could use back then were just you know nowhere near uh, what we have available to us today, which would get us closer to the original design intentions, right? Yeah. Um, anyway, so I was really excited to be able to go and do a, f a fresh rebuild of um, all these boxes um, and then get to play with them. Yeah, uh, that, that was certainly the kind of early reinvigoration of this kind of music drive. Yeah. So as you said, that that was the electric, e electronic. Uh, uh, um, I'm just I just found it online, so I've just put it in the uh, yeah. companion channel. Um, and and then again, this is of course also a, a, just a reminder for everyone. Uh, at the end of this interview, we'll have an open Q and A. But if you've got any comments or any questions in the meantime, uh, please feel free to put them in the companion channel uh, for those of you who are listening live. Uh, no, but but absolutely, that that is one of the things. But then, of course, once you started to build all these boxes, uh, there was a time when you made the switch over to modular. So how that did that came to be? Yeah, so it was essentially looking for the next project. Um, and I had kind of played around with, uh, I think it was Korg, had mm -hmm. a kind of groove box thing that a friend of mine at, at uh, work had, at, at uh, Microsoft had one. And um, he had lent it to me to go and play with. Um, and uh, so I started looking at, you know, kind of modern synths and 
uh, was kind of amazed that you know analog synths were back. I, I had you know I, I just kind of blinked my eye and all of a sudden was covered in all this uh, all this um, <laughs> available analog synth gear. Um, you know, new, you know, this wasn't, I didn't have to go on eBay and like rebuild everything. This was stuff that you could go and buy that people were making. Yeah. And it just re, it really inspired me to dig deeper. And I discovered this modular thing and I told myself, Lenny, don't do that. You're going to go <laughs> down that rabbit hole and you're never going to come out. And I think we know how that story went. <laughs> um, um, I think, I think so, we, yeah, we, we I, all have those kind of stories. Well, we all knew what we were yeah, getting yeah, ourselves I, into, right? <laughs> I think so. Um, and so, yeah, so then I was discovering um, the fact that I could continue this building thing, right, um, of continuing to solder. But, of course, that meant moving over to, to doing it. Um, SMD work, which I hadn't done to this point. Mm -hmm. um, and so got a couple SMD kits and just started building. Um, and then, you know, just started doing, uh, buying pre-done boards uh, that then I would source all the parts. And then I realized how easy it was to get circuit boards made. And then I realized how easy it was to start modifying the circuits. And yeah, that, that whole thing just kind of snowballed into um, what's going on today. <laughs> absolutely but but then still there there is a part of to that story where you said okay well it's, it's great to start building it yourself you you get to a point where you said okay well i see how this how this works i understand how to make a step from something that has been pre-designed to, to to design in your own uh but there was yeah. a time when you actually said okay well now i'm going to take the plunge and i'm gonna i'm gonna build yeah. something i'm gonna offer it to others as well yeah, exactly. Well, there, I mean, there's nothing, no better way to learn what a circuit does than have it broken in front of you and try to figure out how to fix it. Um, I mean, that just just that process is really, really educational. Um, and so um, having that opportunity, um, I, you know, as I was building units out um, was just really helpful. And uh, um yeah, I'm just really thankful for all the opportunities there uh, to go uh, mm -hmm. to go and learn. Um, and then, uh, as you mentioned, I mean, it was learning. It was really as soon as I learned how easy it was to get circuit boards made, especially to get PCPA services, so you know, getting circuit boards back pre-assembled. Um, as soon as I learned how to do that, and I was just plug. Uh, I don't know if I should be plugging other you know businesses, but JLC PCB um, with their PCB and PCBA services are just so insanely awesome um, where you can essentially just submit Gerber's a bomb in a pick and place. Yeah. And they've got, I mean, pretty much 90% of what you need in stock. And in a week and a half, you can have boards back that cost you 50 bucks. Um, awesome, so essentially yeah. I could get, you know, instead of having these big intricate breadboards in front of me that I'd stare at and you have to put on the shelf, right? You yeah. put it on the shelf, come back to it in two weeks, right? Cause I, you know, we all have lives. I got a family, um, I've got um, a, a, a job and, you know, try to at least see friends every once in a while. Yeah. Um, and so uh, I step away from stuff sometimes for two, four, six weeks. I don't get to go back to it. And then you pull out a breadboard and man, it, that thing is intimidating. It looks like a box of spaghetti, you know? <laughs> um, and so uh, being able to have stuff already made and the circuits might not, or they're not going to be perfect, but they're going to be good enough where I can debug them, get them working. Then I start, inter I do small circuits on boards and then start, you know, connecting those together and use those as building blocks to build the thing that I'm trying to build. Mm -hmm. um, that Once I discovered that all that was possible, um, it really made designing since possible in my lifestyle, right? Of this having these breaks of periods. And sometimes I'll have like this where I'm off of work um, or I have a really slow period at work. Um, and so um, I can go and actually end up getting, you know, sometimes five hours on a weekday to go and work on these things. Um, and so then it's all available whenever I, whenever my time's available, um, I can go and dive deep and, and start working and creating. So awesome. that, that, that was a, that was a big realization and a big change for me. Mm -hmm. So, so what were a couple of the, the first modules that you actually worked on that you actually designed yourself where you said, okay, well, this is, this is something I'm going to go out and order the PCBs for. Um, how, how did you approach that? And uh, could you tell us a bit more about those those timelines? 
Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, from a year perspective, I'm really terrible at that, but it probably would have been sometime in the 2018-17 yeah. time period, somewhere around there. Um, and um, it would have been Bosque, Filthy, uh, Envy, and in, in starting there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually hadn't discovered JLC yet. Um, I don't even know when they came to, into existence. I just stumbled across them one day. Um, and uh, um, I was actually ordering, and it was going through kind of more traditional PCBA service, where it's actually like two to three month turn on getting my on, on getting product back. Where they go out, they source all the stuff. It's not. I mean, JLC is just so unique because they have everything in. Everything's there. I mean, not everything, but a lot of things are there. <laughs> um, I mean, and I mean today. I mean today is a mess, right? With uh, part availability. So oh, yeah. I mean, they're, they're, everything's a mess right now, but I mean, they're doing a, a, a phenomenal job of keeping as much as they can in stock um, and making it available uh, at, at fairly reasonable prices when they could be charging a lot more. I, I know that because when I buy in bulk, I end up mm-hmm. having to pay a lot more than sometimes what I can buy singles for, from them for. Um, but anyways, um, so it was Bosk, uh, Filthy, Envy. Uh, those were the first ones, and the, those took me... Uh, probably nine months and 12 months in development. And I mean, I mean, t- today, um, if I started from that from scratch, that would probably be a month or two worth of work. Um, th- th- those are fairly simple modules for, for what they are. I've also learned a lot more uh, since then. I uh, learned a, a lot more. So, um, awesome. but those, those modules were probably about, it was probably about a nine month process and getting those ready uh, for production. And then you got to go through all the production processes and being ready there. And back when I did those, we did we did all manufacturing in house. So I mean, everything we we would get the PCBs done and get the SMD soldered, but then we would finish everything uh, mm-hmm. back in Seattle. Um, we've moved now to where we get most most of the product uh, that we get in is is fully built, and then we just do flashing and testing um, in the in in Seattle. Oh, awesome. Um, but uh, it was a um, uh, using JLC to get those and discovering that um, was, yeah, just kind of a big, it was a big change from having to wait three months, right? You come up with what you think is the perfect design, you've done your breadboarding, and then you send it off and you realize that you transcribed something wrong and forgot the power and op amp. That's one of my, it's one of my most famous uh, <laughs> mistakes that I make <laughs> is forgetting to put power to op amp, which is easy when it's a psych, when it's in a, you know, a, 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 um, Larger pin, uh, a pin width, but when it's those tiny TSOP packages, it's really difficult to get power into those. So you kind of end up kind of blowing that board and having to go and respin because you can't even test with it. Anyways, um, oh, it's, wow. uh, yeah, it, it, it just, it, it was, this is why having that quick turn, right? I mean, this is, yeah. I mean, I, j- j- Jesper, I know you, you, you're, you're in software. I don't know if uh, folks listening here are in software as well, but I mean, we got to have a, have a term there, especially in cloud development, right? To fail fast. Yep. Uh, you don't want things to, <laughs> to uh, spin forever. And so, I mean, this is one of those things of I can go out, spend, you know, 50 bucks, get a, get, get a design back, but it only takes me a week and a half. So I can discover if I've failed really quickly. Immediately. Um, and you and immediately then, know where yeah, the fallacies exactly. are. And, yeah. Exactly, and then and then recover, get something new out, and I can get get multiple turns uh, oh, pretty quick. Th- so. there, there, I use the words agile here. Oh wow! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> it's very agile because you immediately get feedback, and you immediately can turn around and do that. So, how is that yeah. that first feedback from? Because as you said, so the first couple of modules were the Bosque, the NV. Um, what was the feedback like from the community, or from your customers, or from your um yeah clientele if i may use the word yeah uh it was great um i um i I felt uh incredibly supported uh not only i mean within seattle um certainly got a lot of great support there yeah um but then as we went out wider i i think the the idea of having uh kind of small fun um, affordable uh, um, modules available for folks, I think, really resonated for folks. Mm-hmm. Um, and those modules are, are still um, uh, uh, good sellers today. Um, and 
because uh, they're just kind of good core basics, and this is why this is why I I started there. Uh, but then also, um, I, it just allowed me to get my feet under me with you know learning how to design modules. Uh, they, they were certainly a great place to start before diving into something like dirty laundry or carve, uh, which get into be a, a bit more complicated. And I mean, I think carve was thirteen cranks before I got it right. Um, that one was a ridiculous amount. Um, uh, yeah. It, it, anyways, it was, uh, those took, the, those certainly took a lot more than those earlier modules. Of course, but still starting off with a, uh, with an oscillator and starting off with an envelope, uh, or at least an ADSR module, uh, aren't usually the, the modules where makers typically start. They, they, at least from, not from my, my, uh, my experience up until now, where you typically see people trying out things like like maybe malts first and and you went out and dove into probably the kind of modules that are really uh, scrutinized as well and and you got a great following from yeah. the start yeah so i and that's where i started with the the curtis electronic chips right so all the cem chips um which are and i forgot the numbers now because it's been so long since i've I uh, dug into those modules, but yeah. um, there there is the the oscillator chip, the filter chip, and the and the um, envelope chip, right? That um, yeah. from the original SEM line. So essentially, all the core logic was there, and this was really just about exposing the core logic of that. Because again, I mean, going back to the these roots, right? I mean, I was like, you know, SH one hundred one guy i mean that, yeah. that, that was one of my synths that I, that I used to have that i used to play live with um and so <laughs> um then finding out that i can get uh some of these original chips um available and that i could just now expose those for everybody um was really exciting to me and so that i mean that was that that motivation to go and make those uh yeah those out there and have something that was again small i was trying not to be super fancy mm -hmm. i started believe me i started being really fancy and i had these big modules designed and i was <laughs> like it's going to be three years before i get this out anywhere because it's hard to get modules right um and so um that was when i realized i needed to offer myself some constraints right that's how we all thrive mm -hmm. in, in the world is having having some constraint brings in the creativity and brings in uh some uh new solutions. And so that's where then that, that kind of six HP um, sweet spot uh, kicked in for me, which is all those, I think the first seven modules I released were all in the, in the six HP like space. You, so. so the boss, the envy, the, um, uh, the filthy yeah. and. Yeah. And then there was uh, like steps, steps, tilt and blend. blend. Yeah. And I did one after that, which I'm forgetting right now. Um, yeah, I'm 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 a terrible salesperson. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, no worries. Uh, there's there's a lot to it, and not everyone can remember their whole. Because I'm, in the meantime, I've got your um uh your website open, so I've got a a cheat sheet in front of me. So that's I I wholeheartedly immediately <laughs> forgive you for not knowing everything by by heart. Absolutely no. Um, but then uh, of course uh, one one question there is you. you 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 pointed out you, you were in uh, indeed inspired by these uh, these sem chips like the uh, the thirty two forty for the for the for the oscillator and the others for uh, for there as well. And on the one hand, you said, well, you were inspired by those, and did you then choose to use them uh, because you wanted to reimagine that sound that you already had before in your uh, in your synthesizers, or was this more like a choice? Well, that's gonna give me something like a like a running start if i want to start creating my own modules um it was really about creating um building blocks so mm -hmm. I, even let me i should probably back up a little bit and tell because uh, what we haven't talked about is those early kits that i did right which were yeah, yeah. i mean I, I brought them up um, but that was all digital, right? So, I mean, I started with clouds, right? That was my first SMD, um, fully hand-soldered myself uh, kit. Nice. And so um, 
I was getting the exposure to digital modules through what I was building there, right? So yeah. I built a braid. I mean, this is when I when I first started. I've read I, one of the forums. I don't remember what it was. Probably a Facebook forum, Facebook group. Sorry. Um, and um, I read some advice from somebody that said always make two because the first one's the hardest. <laughs> so if you <laughs> if you make a second one, it's a lot easier. And then you can trade that one for another module. Hmm. I thought that was great advice. Um, and um, so uh, that was what I was doing. So I, I would build, you know, I built myself two clouds. Um, and then I offered it up for trade and got 35 responses for somebody that wanted nice. clouds. Um, and then, so then I built two more. And then I was like, I'm sick of building clouds. <laughs> I'm going to build the <laughs> braids. Um, and so that's where then these whole, you know, kind of making, um, uh, cause clouds had been discontinued at this point. Yeah. Um, this was, uh, you know, the, the only supply was people kind of hand building these in their basements. Right. Um, and so kind of discovering that, um, made me, and this is where it was actually going through the process of. Um, getting clouds built um, was my first time turning the crank on having a module built was going and asking, you know, and having um, a handful of those made that then I could go and turn around and start responding to these 35 people that asked for um, yeah. uh, uh, clouds modules. And so then that's what then made me realize there's a whole business here of taking oh, yeah. these out of print um, uh, modules or you know discontinued modules um, or things only available like um, ornament and crime right I mean it's just like yeah. a, I mean it's a Swiss Army knife of all Swiss Army knives and making that available for folks you know where they can feel good about what they're getting um, from a, a um, warranty perspective right and not just something that gets made and then they're kind of stuck with it if there's any problems. Um, and, um, yeah, so that, that's where then that whole side of the, the business started growing. Um, and it was shortly after starting to sell those when I started into this, um, you know, trying to do the analog side. So you were asking about, you know, people t tend to go, you know, s simpler, um, you know, and going with molts and everything. And I had, I was coming from these, like, I mean, clouds is, is a bit more complicated than Bosque. Um, in that mm -hmm. uh, not only is it, you know, got, uh, um, it's running an entire microprocessor on it, right? It's got the <laughs> DAC, um, and then, you know, it's got all the DAC handling of handling all the voltages and clocks, you know, the clock oscillators, and it's got, it's way more complicated from a components perspective. Absolutely, um, yeah. And so I felt like going to build a, a analog oscillator was actually, you know, especially one that was based on an existing chip, right? It was like, I thought that was the simple thing. <laughs> <laughs> that, that that was the the uh, on ramp that was really appealing, and again, then allowed me to start building a rack um, that allowed me to build this kind of good goodness of of yesteryear with all the analog goodness, as well as then bring in all this great stuff uh, um, that Emily has been uh, uh, creating, as well as the rest of the open source community was uh, developing, um, so that then I could blend all that together into a full system. Absolutely, and. Uh just just for my understanding so uh all your reimaginings of the uh the mutable range you might say um so uh, from from the website i see that you still have uh your interpretation of clouds on there but i i can't see the braids there anymore uh but is it am i missing i, I that never yeah. yeah yeah no i never actually ended up selling i mean because so i had this right i was he i was making these things and so I would go through and make uh, these and make one for myself and then sell one, right? Or yeah. uh, trade for, uh, trade with one. And then um, what I discovered in doing that is where what products people were interested in seeing. Mm -hmm. um, and the demand on braids was always super low. And I mean, once Platts came out, I mean, Platts is, yeah. is um, at least in my opinion, a much better user interface. Um, it's um, a, a very clear evolution uh, from the thoughts on Braid. There's a lot more in Braid. I mean, there's things in Braids that aren't in Platts, right? So there's certainly yeah. um, uh, so 
some uh, things that got left behind, uh, but from an overall uh, standpoint, um, always felt that uh, Platts really kind of took things forward. Um, and uh, so that's where most, or I mean, other than those kind of early days where I was, I was um, making all these items um, by hand and, you know, mostly with trying to build myself a rack out. Um, yeah, I've never, I, I don't think other than that first initial one on braids, I've actually ever done another one. Okay, uh, th at I least that confirms that I that I'm still able to find things on websites if they're not if not that not there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I oh, pulled thanks. up our website too, and of course now I'm realizing all the things I need to go and change as I'm trying to scroll through and realize how hard it is to scroll through a full list of modules. But well, anyway, it's, it's not that, no 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 worries no worries we're we're. I'm big on uh, user experience, and I can still say yeah. that it's a very nice website. No worries there whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. It's just, it, we, yeah. Wait, wait, when you've got a small business, you're always finding the faults. So, um, and yeah, and of course, everyone's their own biggest critic. Exactly. Absolutely, absolutely. So, if you now look at your um, at, at the overall, well, uh, let's say how the balance is for you uh, regarding your, your your day job, your family, after later audio. Um, ha, do you have an idea, okay, well, I'm, I'm at a good balance there, or do you still see, well, I might want to make some changes here or there, or uh, how do you see that going to evolve over the next, well, year or two? Yeah, so um, the balance there has been, I think, really healthy. Um, it's been one of the great things about working um, at Microsoft and the, that kind of corporate life there is that I'm able to strike a pretty good balance there with how much I how much I need to sink in. I mean, everything comes in waves, but things are generally healthy there to where then it leaves me, you know, kind of the evenings uh, and weekends then to um, run this business. Uh, but then also, most importantly, is that um, my wife actually quit her um, job that she, she was previously an acupuncturist, ran her own practice, ha had her own clinic, um, and actually uh, was looking for something new herself and came on to help uh, and really runs after later uh, kind of in the day to day. Yeah. Um, so she's um, uh, kind of the, I mean, if anybody's ordered something from our website um, or um, uh, uh, most correspondence via email are going to be uh, with her. Um, and so she's really taken on and spends probably the most hours out of each week uh, running after later. Um, and then that leaves it so that then myself in the evenings, then I can uh, take, you know, the handful of warranty questions and more, you know, folks that are, and she, she's not a modular synthesis. Um, she's a great business person, um, but um, is not into modular. So if somebody has a technical question about a, about a product um, and that's going to, that's then what would I will be able to respond to in my uh, evening or weekend hours. So awesome. But that's great that you can really approach it like a team in that regard and really keep make sure that yeah, it stays sure. it stays healthy for everyone as well and then yeah, yeah for sure and yeah and then tim tim podular modcast i don't know if i'm allowed to i, I guess i just <laughs> did um anyways uh but tim um has been a big help as well um he's been helping us a lot with video content um and then with other uh kind of you know required tasks to kind of keep the keep the business <laughs> afloat um uh, he's been um, an absolute uh, rock star for us, so it's been great having his help as well. Absolutely. Well, and he now has his own module as well, so that's um, <laughs> that's a big thank you as well, right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> and I have to say, the first time I saw the Bleep Bloop 2000, I was like, yes, this is what modular <laughs> is all about. <laughs> it's not yeah, taking things I too seriously, but making no. sure that everything is, it should be fun, and yeah. that that this 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 exemplifies that that thing. So for those of you who've not seen the uh, the bleep bloop two thousand, uh, let me just grab a picture and just make sure that we have it on the. Um, let me see if I I'll probably have to look for that. So bleep. 
bleep? Where yeah, is so the, the, yeah. the, that, that bleep loop started um, with a joke gif that Jenny, Tim's friend, um, who actually designed our shirts um, and our uh, some of our recent stickers as well. Um, but she um, paint, hand painted a module for Tim. Yeah. Um, and then every time I would see Tim post publicly somewhere, he would figure out how to weasel that module into the picture in the background, on the <laughs> side of a, of a picture of a rat, whatever it was. He loved that thing so much. Um, and it was just seeing that and we were meeting up. Um, I think, uh, anyways, we, he, he and I were uh, meeting up and having a chat. And um, we, uh, I said, you know, we should really make that thing do something. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, and so then, then was born, um, and it, so it came with constraints, right? It had a number of knobs, a switch, and and the, a number of jacks that were predetermined for us, and we needed to figure out how to fit functionality <laughs> into that, um, which is a really unusual design challenge, right? And like I said, at the be said earlier, right? It's all about constraints. Yeah. Uh, this was a new challenge, a new design challenge. It was really, it was fun. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm glad we did that one. Certainly, we, we, we certainly got another one in the works too. Um, and uh, looking forward to uh, part two, shall we say. And is that again then based on Tim or some other uh, Seattle-based? Everything uh, must evolve. Oh, okay. So you heard it here first, folks. It's going to be a bleep loop three thousand apparently, or a bleep loop uh, two thousand and one. The reimagining. There you go. <laughs> Interesting. Everything no. evolved. I was almost uh, afraid that you're gonna uh, you're, you're gonna do a, a a Jeremy module or something like that. That could also have been because, of course, that's all Seattle based. So yeah, who knows? Um, could also have been uh, a thing. Um, <laughs> sorry, I need to uh, I need to find my balance again. No, that's absolutely great, and I I still love the the overall layout, and I can't stop laughing when I look at that. Uh, that module and i think it's just so great that those things have a place within modular within your iraq and within this community that we all have and and i love both both you and tim for for doing such a thing because it's it's just great it's absolutely fantastic um so if we then have have a quick look at uh where you stand currently with both after later audio and where you stand in life of course um is there anything where you said, okay, well, in that whole approach to modular, um, are there any things where you said, okay, well, I might have done those sort could have sort of things differently, or any 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 lessons learned from from any of your things that you did there? Well, there's tons of lessons learned. Absolutely. I mean, I, 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 every product's got to come probably at least ten of. Ah, those. but that, maybe then let me um, rephrase. If you were to go back to what was it like 2017, 2018, uh, just before yeah. you 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 took the plunge, what would be your f one point of advice you would give yourself back then? Uh, uh I mean, so I I'm I'm a big. Uh, I frequently suffer from imposter syndrome. So this is right where you're uh, feeling like you're not good enough to succeed um, and that everybody else around you has a lot more knowledge and is knows way more than you do. And so it's a very intimidating moment. Um, and I think uh, the big thing um, that I would change and would probably have made things a bit more um, uh, a bit more streamlined for me um, would have mm -hmm. been to have the confidence that I can actually do this with the support, right? So with yeah. um, my wife running the business, with Tim, we've got, a, I guess, a, an intern in the office now as well, awesome. um, I, I guess would be the right term for that. Um, so um, it is um, uh, that um, if, if, yeah, anyways, it would be to, um, essentially just encourage myself um, and really um, anybody else that ends up listening to this. Um, and if it's in modular or not, it doesn't really matter. Um, mm -hmm. That yeah. go and have the confidence to do the thing that you're trying to do. 
yeah. uh, finding the confidence is probably half the work. Um, and then, um, I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of late nights, a lot of big mistakes. Um, I mean, we've, you know, got back modules, you know, from production runs that didn't work that I had to figure out how to, how to fix. Um, and sometimes you can, and sometimes you can't, you gotta be willing to, to, um, uh, kind of push through those challenges and um, just kind of make it a reality for yourself. Anyways. No, great points. Absolutely great points. And as someone who is also uh, suffering a lot from that imposter syndrome uh, that you describe and I've been, and I think that it is something that no, 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 I won't. I won't finish that thought. But as someone who's also um, suffering from that, I can I can I can attest to myself, of course. Um, has this initiative, has this new endeavor that you embarked upon, has that strengthened you in that sense, or has that brought additional challenges for you, specifically pointed to that imposter syndrome, if I may ask? Um, it's a great question. I, I, I think along every uh, new incarnation, so I, 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 um, I'm constantly trying to figure out what's next for after later, right? And you know, how, what am I going to do to keep this interesting and keep it fun? Yeah. Um, it, you know, along each one of those turns, there's a bit of can I actually make that happen? And I mean the it's, I, I don't want to get to one of those things that I can't make happen <laughs> because it absorbs a lot of energy and time, right? If I, especially now these modules I'm making are a lot bigger, a lot yeah. more complicated um, and um, uh, take a lot of time, right? Like I, I think I mentioned, I think it was Carver. The Carver yeah. laundry was 13 turns. The other one was like 10 or 11, so it wasn't that much better. Uh, they were both essentially, you know, 12, uh, 12 months in development. Um, and, uh, um, I mean, doing that and taking on something, you know, two or two or three modules that are just too complicated for me, such as getting into a big software project, right? It's like none of the yeah. modules I've made myself have any software on them. I do that because I write software for, or I don't know, I no longer personally write software, but I work in software for a living. Yeah. Um, and so yeah. I really enjoy not having software in my, in, in my second job. Um, but if, I mean, if I was to take on and, you know, start taking on C development and, you know, starting to, uh, uh develop software modules again, or, um, s start actually doing my own, uh, software, and that'd be a huge tax on the company and could potentially, you know, slow us down for two years if I decided to go and take that on. Um, and that's, that, that would be a big moment of imposter syndrome, but there's a lot of people out there in this world that can write a lot better C code than I can. And I think that that's a what well, I'm just taking in what you're saying, and I think that that is really profound. Where you said, okay, well, on the one hand, uh, you need to embrace, and you need to have a lot of um, a lot of insight into how your psyche works to make that determination, especially when you say, yeah. okay, well, um, writing code, or at least working with code coming from a software background and then being aware enough or understanding enough to say, well, there's a time and place for that, but in this part of my life, I should steer clear of that because I yeah. say, well, I, I want to do this and you know exactly, well, if I, if I ever did that, it would become a, a, a burden, not just on your mental health, uh, but also on the, well, maybe even the productivity or the um, the innovation of After Later Audio. And I, I find that really profound and I'm really, um, really honest. So thank you so much for that. That's, that's, that's a great thing. Yeah. And well, even though you, you already touched upon that, uh, but how, how do you see uh, ALA after later audio uh, evolving over the next couple of uh, next couple of months years. Uh, yeah. Any anything specific that's on your outlook where you want to say, well, this is the way I want to turn this company into, or, um, or might you even say, well, 
I like where we are currently with the speed that we have, with the innovation that we have. How do you how do you look at that? Yeah, so um, I mean the the big direction shift um, as of about a year ago for after later, which you're starting to see now come out. I mentioned you know dirty laundry and carve a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. Bleep loop. I mean bleep loop is not a is not a complicated module, right? It's it's not. Um, but um, what you're seeing us or seeing me push towards from a design perspective is kind of bigger, uh, more complicated um, modules. Um, and um, so um, like, I mean, coming up, um, you'll likely see um, something similar to a complex oscillator from us. Nice. Um, but it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a system um, so that um, doesn't tie you into having, you know, one massive complex oscillator that you, cause they don't break down and travel well uh, for performance case, uh, you know, type situations. Um, and so uh, trying to offer some flexibility there, but still offer the kind of pre-patching goodness you get from a complex oscillator. Um, a modular so you see, module, you might even say. It, it, sure, uh, but everything is standalone and yeah, it, it, it is, um, I'm trying to get into designing um, essentially these next bigger modules. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I got a, I, I mean, I <laughs> don't want to talk about them because then it puts pressure on me to, to No, absolutely. Them totally and, understand and with that. The, yeah. with, 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 but the, 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 the complex oscillator, I'm, I'm getting, I should have prototypes for the uh, production samples back when, when I'm, I'm back in Seattle. So. That one's pretty close, uh, but then uh, the other things that we've got in the works really continue to get things um, uh, kind of bigger. Um, and I, I mean, we're not going to go into enormous um, at this point. We're not going into like semi-modular space, um, but starting to get into uh, these bigger, more complicated modules is kind of the best way to, to summarize it. Um, that then. Um, uh, the idea is that then those can kind of round out our system because right now the Afflator system I don't view as complete. Um, there's still some some good building blocks that are needed, in my opinion, to make it a kind of a standalone good um, analog um, system. It's 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 certainly taken a lot of great steps, but I, I feel like we need to uh, round it out some more. Um, and then um, after that, I think you'll start to see um, we, we've got we've got some really great ways to go and build on those in the future, uh, where I think we can build uh, some new. It's not it's not really semi modular, um, mm -hmm. but um, it's in that vein. I guess would be the best way to put it. Um, awesome. Of trying to take the afflator system into places that I don't think any other manufacturers uh, have gone into. Uh, but I got to finish it first. First, I got to finish the system um, so that it's, I think, a good standalone system. Um, and then we can really yeah. start to play with it. Um, and uh, I've, I'm really excited for that next step. <laughs> I'm feeling a bit bogged down about uh, f finishing the system, but I'm, I'm close right now. So hopefully hopefully you'll see those come out. Um, you know, the end, the kind of finishing of this kind of core system, uh, hopefully it'll come out sometime in the fall. Would be absolutely uh, and then, fantastic, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, from from there, uh, start into this next journey, which would probably be in, into the following year. So, awesome. And then, and this is again, this is quite a quite a personal question for me: is if you were to take because I've the, the most intrigued I've been into the the ALA modules is on dirty laundry and carve. And could you tell us a bit more about the? the journeys how you decided on both of those well the actual applications of that and how you designed and came up with those uh with those modules because those have been things that we haven't seen in that way shape or form before so how do you come up with those two yeah um i mean they so they um Dirty laundry in particular was a big journey um, that actually started the first kind of three or four turns of the crank on that um, started as um, a wave folder um, and I was trying to make it as clean sounding as possible. And I actually sent around some prototypes um, both within Seattle um, uh, Divkid um, was one as well. Um, he, nice. he got yeah. 
And um, I started getting feedback, um, which was effectively, I mean, from uh, pretty much everybody that used it, which was that it sounds really dirty. Um, and that's when I, and, but they also were saying, but I kind of like it, but it's not really a wave folder. Um, and so then that's where I just, that just gave me license to go and do something <laughs> um, where, I mean, it's like wave folder, you know, I mean, Dirty Laundry is a wave folder, but not really. Um, I mean, it's just a really grungy. And then I just took essentially all the different wave folding circuits I could find and started just making them just really grungy. Um, and so that's why you've actually got, um, I mean, the, uh, I forgot what I called the top left circuit the in Dirty Laundry. It, what, yeah, it, so, so, so that's, um, uh, isn't really a wave folder. It's kind <laughs> of, but not really. Um, anyways, it just, it took, I, I took and started playing around and you get, a, you get a happy accident sometimes. And sometimes you just stare at something and something pops in your head. Um, and so, yeah, I sort of evolved and then I realized I needed to get it. I needed some routing capabilities because it was so unruly. Um, and so that's why you've got all those kind of VCA routing capabilities or crossfading um, so that you could uh, bring in a balance and actually tone it down a bit because I kind of let myself go a little nuts with how gnarly it can sound. <laughs> um, so that's why now you see all the crossfader and VCAs and all that to kind of allow you to rein in <laughs> dirty laundry a bit uh so that it doesn't uh it's 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 not so nasty all the time now but still from the 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 audio demos i've seen it is it's something it's a force to be reckoned with i would say yeah for sure my it was uh yeah it was also a great excuse to get into vactrols um so uh two vactrols in that to get uh yeah, to get the sound, it was the only way I could figure out how to get the control in place that I needed to get in place. So um, went with, uh, and all, all ROHS compliant Vactrols, of course, um, but mm -hmm. nonetheless, uh, getting Vactrols uh, in, the, in the circuit there. So awesome. It was a fun. It was a fun experience. It was it was a really fun process to go through. Um, but again, it was an evolution. You know, I started it going down a path and that's not where I ended up. But um, you might find the clean versions of all of that showing up in this complex oscillator. So. Yeah, awesome. But then still, given given that whole design philosophy that you followed, uh, uh, the factorals you you thrown in, um, that of course makes it very Buchler esque. You might say. Is that something where you yeah. say, okay, well, do you want to do you want to uh, actually say? that's 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 a point where you really want to go into or is that a bit too much to say at this point in time yeah no it was i mean it was a starting point um for the circuit um and again i just wanted to to grunge it up a little bit so you'll notice a little bit more um uh squaring on the on the waves there um yeah. instead of just folding um and there'll be it's just a little bit noisier of a circuit just because of the mm -hmm. components that i used um but um it is um uh yeah it was just it was another opportunity to offer a little bit of balance in the in the overall circuit yeah um and uh allow folks to get a bit more traditional wave folding but still a little bit more unique you know awesome and then of course describing something as grungy while coming from seattle is of course a great <laughs> thing to say um i'll I leave it at that <laughs> there so, you go of course we already way over the hour already uh lenny and i, I do yeah. appreciate all your time so what i'd like to do is i i want to uh close off with my typical last question and then i want to see if there's anyone out there in the audience who has any questions for you so my main question is then I've, I've had the the honor and the well the privilege to uh to ask any sort of questions uh i want to ask over the well almost hour and a quarter um just past so my last question to you is do you have any questions for me or any question you might say uh what what brought you into starting this um Well, um, 
this microphone actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so I'll let you. So this this is a bit of an in joke between Lenny and me. So bef just before we we started this this interview, we had a quick chat with video, and uh, Lenny mentioned, okay, well you've you've got the right uh, microphone going there, and I immediately said, well that that's the reason why I got into into all of this. So this is all started for me when I. I started to do a lot of videos on YouTube for my uh, for my day job and just like like Lenny I work for a software company not a, a big uh, a well-known company like like Microsoft of course but still a pretty well-known um, software company US based software company uh, and I did a lot of YouTube videos and I wanted to improve my uh, my sound quality so I dove into microphones I I dove into audio interfaces and that was the start of the rabbit hole for me and then of course the whole covid situation came along so i was already well in well embedded into this audio world and i was i was i was i was i was just i was just bored i didn't know what to do and i've got um i've got two young kids i've got uh, i've got a loving wife uh, but sometimes I just said, well, I need a hobby. I need to do something. So what I actually ended up doing was, and I'm just going to hold this up for the camera here, is I was just browsing through one of those music stores and just looking for microphones. And I came across the Korg NTS-1, which was, well, <laughs> they call it DIY, but the only thing you needed was a... Uh, uh, was a Phillips hat screwdriver and you could just put together your first synth and that's how it happened and then after that I bought some more synthesizers I bought um, a couple of Volkers I bought some uh, some desktop synthesizers and at that time I already became aware of this this magical world this elusive world of, of Eurorack and I immediately said to myself, like we just talked, <laughs> like we just joked about earlier, Lenny, it's like, I knew I shouldn't be threading that way because that that's where dragons live. Because if I do that, that's going to be <laughs> the end of all my savings. That's going to be the end of all, of all my free time. And yeah. I actually uh, made a deal with myself when I got to the point where oh yeah that needle yeah you just need that needle just once uh, but once it punctures your skin it's going to be okay but because we made a deal with ourselves right and for me the deal was every time i invest into a module or any time i i do something i need to give something back to the community because that's gonna slow me down it's gonna give me an excuse to make sure that I really dive into something before I dive into the next thing and I started to recording videos and all the modules that I uh, that I got into my system and I reached out to a lot of people in the community and I was just impressed and overwhelmed by the support I got uh, so I now have a well <laughs> on the one hand a uh, a channel where I'm able to review a lot of the uh, the modules that I've been playing with, uh, but also gave me an opportunity to also talk to people like you, Lenny, uh, that have these great approaches to designing these things. And the only thing I can think of is I made I made a promise to myself, and that is I want to give back to the community. So all the things that I learned from you, I want to give back to all the other people as well. And yeah, that that's how we got here, and I'm just gonna keep continue doing this because it's, uh, to be honest, it's just too much fun. <laughs> awesome, absolutely. But great question. It is something I'm uh, I'm really enjoying, and maybe the thing I enjoy most is to understand the people behind the the brands the. Uh, the people behind the module understand a bit how they got there, how they came to be, um, know a bit about their struggles, their their successes, and all of those things. Because at the end of the day, we're all we're all human, and 
I think that that's the greatest thing out there to understand who we are and how music ties us together whether that's through yeah. making modules making music enjoying music listening to music or well anything that has something to do with well with things like that yeah so that being said <laughs> i don't want to get too <laughs> philosophical um let's have a quick look at the companion channel if we already have some questions there um so i've got some people buy boats some others buy synth modules that's a great one um so we have one question from bench um who's asking what was your inspiration for the tilt uh, yeah tilt um yeah so tilt started where, right, where i was trying to do um function generator um but i also wanted um to figure out how to cram in um because uh, there was the um just a standard attack release right there was asr right where we had the um uh, sustain sustain stage in there yeah uh, but there wasn't a lot where you could actually do a full adsr um uh, envelope out of a function generator yeah um and so that's where um that started that's where that technical challenge started um, and um, the other thing that always kind of um, um, I found off about function generators, which I mean is technically an easy fix of putting a capacitor in, in, in place, uh, but it was the um, having the, the unipolar oscillating mode, right? Is that everything would always oscillate zero to 10, zero to five, whatever. Um, but yeah. it, it was always be, uh, and so I was trying to get something uh, that you get down into LFO speeds um, that um, were that was a, a bipolar signal, um, and so um, I, um, I I started essentially with those goals of trying to get it to where you could have a unipolar and bipolar mode, um, as well as have um, uh, this ADSR capability built in. Um, and yeah, so started there from I think it was from cat girl synth i don't remember where i started from um but um just you know started trying to consume all the open source options that were out there and trying to figure out um how to start tweaking this in order to get that, that those pieces of functionality in place um awesome. yeah and that's what eventually landed with tilt it's great when because i think that may be one of the few modules where i did everything i wanted to um i i i yeah, it, it's it's the um, most dense module I think I'll do from a potentiometer perspective. So getting six potentiometers in a six HB module, um, I don't <laughs> think I'll try to do again. Um, but um, uh, it, it's a bit cramped in there. But it was also um, I was as I mentioned earlier, I was trying to stay with that six HP mode. So, anyways, perfect. Your six HP size. Great response. So we, we're getting a lot of questions in the companion channel. I do want to say if anyone wants to come on stage and ask a question, just uh, use the raise your hands uh, capability within Discord and we'll uh, get you up on stage. So in the meantime, we get, <coughs> apologies. Um, another question from Bench and that is chat about the circuit for a moment. Love it. Excellent job on this one. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, that, I, that is, um, I mean, without going into kind of gory technical details on that, um, <laughs> I, but I, I, I was able, the the kind of, uh, what I still feel was, was a bit of a miracle moment was figuring out how to do uh, the bipolar and unipolar, um, you know, again, down to LFO range, so it's not rectified in any way. Um, and figuring out how to do that, um, uh, or it's not coupled in any way, sorry, not rect it is also not rectified, which um, 
might have been an easier approach. Um, but anyways, um, I, I, I was trying a particular, the, the, the final solution um, I was actually really proud of and being able to get that to fit in the size that it was able to fit in um, mm -hmm. was, uh, yeah, anyways, it was one of my early proud moments for sure. Oh, perfect, love that, love that. Um, then we've got uh, some feedback from Bill, Bill McGuire. I love that you use the smaller 10 year verges on CV inputs. Was that an influence of working with mutable designs in your earlier modules? Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I, I learned a lot uh, from a circuit perspective on, on the analog side in particular. Um, I mean, on, on the digital, I mean, really a lot of, I mean, I guess apart from streams, um, a lot of um, Emily's hardware um, or uh, digital modules f follow a very a very similar design pattern yeah. um, internally. Um, but um, from her designs on the analog side, I absolutely learned a lot. Um, and from a from a UX perspective as well, having that um, the uh, plastic handled attenuators, um, and then the 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 metal shafted for the main functionality. Um, was was certainly something that just made sense to me and so starting from that um uh position just made the most sense to me yeah. um i i can't i mean I'm, I'm starting to experiment with doing the um uh concentric pot uh layout so using there might be a situation in a one u where you might see the a 10 u uh be the outside knob and the main function Ooh. be the inside knob. But that would be, the I think, the only deviation I would ever do on that. That is quite a, a great thing to see, of course, just from a um, functionality per HP perspective. That's going to bring a lot of things together, I would say. And you do see a lot of the other uh, makers out there follow along with that um, small attenuverter on CV inputs that um, that Emily brought and then you of course uh, well uh, uh, build upon so I'm, I'm curious to see how that concentric that dual function approach will uh, go into especially the one U uh, space you might say yeah um, yeah the, the go ahead sorry no no, no, go, no sorry 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 uh, I, I was I was just gonna say the the one U format is really uh, it's just really constraining. It is, it is. I mean, it's a killer. It's a killer uh, for potentiometers because you can only get one. Um, jacks <laughs> you can get two. Pots you uh, get one. So pots are really expensive size wise. Um, so that's what we're starting to do experiment and figure out what we can do to uh, try to bring some of the. Some of the stuff that folks love and be able to make it available in the one you because i know how hard it can be to find what you're looking for in that in that Absolutely. size so uh, are, are we at a point in time when we can actually well just crown intelligel with the one you crown or are we still up in the air about that well we i, I um absolutely love the intelligel cases um yeah the performance cases um i mean that's what we demo everything in um and i mean their pallet case is what sits on my after i get something stable and i know i'm not going to blow their power supply um, <laughs> then i'll take the module out and put it in a little pallet case and i have a little pallet case that i use for actually patching and and uh testing with um, and that's why you see, you know, I mean, we have things that integrate in with those cases because it's literally, you know, what I, what I develop these uh, modules yeah. in. Um, so um, that's why you see a lot of that from us. Um, it's also really handy that uh, either via adapter or just, you know, bolting it in on, on one side, um, you can get the modules to fit into the pulp, to the pulp logic format as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, it's uh, certainly heard. A, we've certainly heard a lot of requests for uh, uh, Pulp Logic, so it's um, uh, certainly a format that's still out there, and certainly a format that folks are still building for um, or have cases for. Um, but it's also really expensive to maintain multiple um, multiple formats of the same module. Uh, so that's imagine, why we've yeah. just kind of 
we, we, we've stuck with the IntelliGel um, uh, format. And uh, I mean, there's just a lot of IntelliGel. I mean, I don't, don't know how many times you've looked to go and buy an IntelliGel case, um, but they're kind of oh, hard yeah. to find. I Meaning, it's effectively, there's as many IntelliGel cases in the world as they can make. Because if they could make more, there'd they probably would. be more in the world. And they would have. <laughs> Absolutely. No. Uh, and um, I'm, I'm still I'm, I'm trying to get Danielle on on this uh, show as well because uh, from what I've heard from people at IntelliGel uh, they're working well not around the clock but they're doing the best they can to make as many oh yeah as many units as they can believe, yeah. believe uh, me I, they're still I human right the manufacturing yeah. challenges yeah no I understand the manufacturing challenges for sure especially when it comes to physical stuff like oh, that yeah. that has yeah. a bunch of electrical in it as well and I mean they've got uh, uh, plastic parts they've got aluminum machine parts I mean yeah it's it's a it's a mess uh, from a manufacturing perspective um, and certainly uh, you know uh, have empathy for having to oh, yeah. something like that after later doesn't make cases <sighs> for a reason <laughs> I can imagine I can imagine absolutely Anyways. So then we've got a quick comment from uh, Rory James Allen. Um, sorry I can't join, I saw the notifications and that uh, this was Officer later and thought I should mention I'm using the Filthy in the studio right now. By far my Woo favorite filter I've ever used. And he actually included a great uh, a, a great picture of, of them using uh, Filthy in combination with Platts, the Allen Synthesis, and the dub for a one four five dash four and what i think is i think a befuckle module going by the red color there but i'm not quite sure what it is uh but again thanks so much for your uh, your love and commitment rory I do appreciate that um next question is from uh robots are red uh, steps is great and heads into sequencer territory. Any plans for an ALA sequencer? Oh. So, in order, the only sequencers, I mean, doing analog sequencers is hard. Yeah. Um, and so, all the stuff that, um, in the at least in the near term here, will be to do um, uh, more like Turing machine steps. Um, or Alan, sorry, um, using our branded term, um, but um, uh, we'll be essentially trying to lever shift registers. Um, yeah, um, we've got actually something that doesn't use a shift register as part of this complex oscillator thing, um, which I'll talk Ooh. more about once we get there. But um, it's something that bring a little bit more. It's a slightly different approach to doing step step voltage control. Um, but it's nothing where it's going to be kind of a programmable, you know, kind of, you know, be, um, uh, I've forgotten the name beat step. Yes, that's it. Yeah. Yes. Beat step and key step. Yeah. Beat step pro. Um, it's, it's nothing getting in, uh, uh, to those. Um, I would absolutely love to make the performer, um, and make that available for folks, but I can't because of the licensing on it. Um, but um, that, yeah. that 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 performer light or performer product, um, I mean, that's um, back when I was doing um, actually trying to put together live sets in that, which I've uh, very much put on the back burner for for the foreseeable future. But back when I was doing that, um, I was exclusively using the beat step and and the performer, um, and absolutely loving them. So. And the performer, you mean the uh, Westlicht one, right? Y yes, exactly. Yeah. Awesome. So and Simon, if you're listening and you're looking <laughs> for a partner, please reach out. Uh, so, uh, and this is me just being completely unaware of what the scenario is. So Westlicht uh, released this as a... Uh, how, how did Simon release this, to my knowledge? Uh, he re he released it all through GitHub, and he's continually updating. Um, so, was, I mean, I haven't checked probably for a couple of months, um, but he was uh, continuing uh, to update functionality, fix bugs. Um, and, uh, I mean, it's a great product. I mean, I, I really... 
I, I hope he finds a way to make it available in a way that he can um, uh, reap some of the benefits of all the work he's put into it. Um, and yeah, available absolutely. For folks, because it's an absolutely great product, and I wish more people had it. So I'm, I'm just here. I am looking, plugging looking other in. people's stuff as part again. No, I'm a but that's that's person. great. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. No, that, that, that this is community work, right? So I'm yeah, just... exactly. There you go. Yeah, no, he he makes he does he makes absolute. It's an absolutely great product. Um, and uh, yeah, I'd love to make it part of the app later, uh, um, or somebody else's. Um, I mean, just just making it available to the world, I think, would be a a, a, a great step. Yeah, so he's released that, um, and I'm, I'm of course not a licensing guru, uh, but he ah. he released it on their non-commercial share alike, yeah. and that's of course one yeah, thing. So it's, and it's, it, and it's, the software it's, it's, is on their MIT, on the yeah, oh, yeah the it's on their MIT. Yeah, certainly go and take, and I mean I. I mean, this is really all about adhering to the intent of the of the of the. Um, uh, intellectual property owner, right? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Just, I mean, really, really, what um, I believe the intent behind this is is, hey, please don't go and make this commercially because I could go and write slightly change the hardware and say this is a different thing, even though it no, might be so absolutely. much derived. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's yeah. all there's all kinds of things you can do, but I don't want to go and do those things. Um, and um, I'm just hoping. I'm hoping that he finds a way to financially benefit before somebody else does that. That's no, it. absolutely. Um, absolutely. Because he's put, I mean, he's now like, I think three years into building this thing. Um, and yeah. Uh, anyways, yeah, sorry, we're, we're way in the weeds on the, on the, on the sequencer, but that, that, that is, as far as I'm concerned, um, I mean, that is the sequencer, um, at least from my experience, at least um, in the modular space, I absolutely adored working with it. And I can't imagine doing something better, honestly, um, with all the work that he's put into that. Um, and it, it jives with everything that I believe should be in a sequencer. So that's why you've not really seen me uh, try to attempt to do one. Because you already think that the, the best kind of sequencer is already it's, out there. Yeah. It, I, I don't have a better vision than what's already out there. Great. So, uh, Simon, if you hear this, <laughs> that's a great compliment <laughs> to your uh, to, uh, to all the work that you've done. Um, then uh, another comment from Benj, and that is the X2 tilts cross modulating each other is great fun. Nice dark clinical tone. Ooh. That is so. If you're using two tilts, and then oh, I think I know where he's going with that. That's a great yeah. point. Um, and then again, another yeah. comment about the about the um, the copyright issues from uh, robots are red. And can if anyone ever make a micro maths, that would be awesome. But I assume colon copyright issues. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you never do a never do a direct clone of mass, but certainly, um, I mean, ca the getting a lot of the functionality of mass. It's not everything. Getting a lot of it into carve and then being able to multiply by two um, was certainly, um, you know, part of the part of the trying to get a dense. I didn't want to just go with two and make it incredibly tiny. Um, yeah. Because. To, to Ben just comment above, that's really just two tilts um, uh, can can accomplish the same thing. Yeah. Um, and so I was trying to do something unique, and then it also made Carve into a mixer and a standalone synth voice, and right, it did all these things that you can do with Carve um, that you wouldn't be able to do with just two uh, uh, two channels. Uh, but that was one of the um, original ideas for Carve was to actually make it DARV or a dual. <laughs> Dual attack release <laughs> VCA, and there is of course, and and to uh, to robots are red's question. There are a lot of search inspired function generators out there already that you might combine into something that would constitute a micro mats if you want. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, I think uh, from a function generator, you know, just a straight up function generator perspective, there's a lot out there. Um, mm -hmm. And again, I mean, part of the thing with Carve was being able to bring yeah. all that then at that price point, right? Uh, being able to bring, you know, four function generators and four VCAs for 
I don't remember what I what it cost, but it's somewhere in the mid two hundred range. If I if I if I remember, let me just um, do a quick let me just do a quick price yeah, check on yeah. that. Um, <laughs> ringing up this department for a price check on. There you go, two twenty four. <laughs> yeah, so um, uh, early two hundreds, right? Uh, from a from a price perspective, um, because we put it all on a single board and. Uh, made it all into a single unit I, anyway so it just in, enables um, a, a really great price point on the module absolutely and if I had only done you know two of the channels it still would have been like you know 175 to 200 absolutely um, so it's so from it's from, from a from a, from a functionality, functionality per HP and per dollar and per dollar yeah yeah yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah I was able absolutely. to just do a lot more yeah so how's that how's that response been on carve uh, from 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 the professional usage from from people that have already embraced it and used it in their modular setups how's that feedback been because i've seen i've seen, uh, I've seen a lot good. of videos of course but just from from yeah from the real world you might yeah, say yeah it's been it it's been a it's been a great response um i've been i've been really happy with how people have responded and of course everybody always wants more and they want to see things different um, and I can just say that I listen to every one of those pieces of feedback. Awesome. Back is, um, I mean, you can't make a business if you're not listening to feedback. Um, yeah. So it, I, I'll say this, that the feedback from the Carve launch has inspired additional products for us um, <laughs> that um, um, I believe offer another kind of unique place in the market and still follow all of our principles. Um, so, um, I'm, uh, um, looking forward to bringing that out as well. So, uh, but the, 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 uh, reception has been good. Um, and I've been really happy with the coverage that it's gotten as well. Awesome. So, so happy to hear that. Uh, let's see if we've got the latest questions first. Let me see if anyone raised their hands in the room. Not yet, but we do have some questions in the companion channel um okay benj thanks for addressing the questions of perfect thank you this has been a great conversation and then from robots are red end of burst in steps and end of rise uh and end of c eoc uh end of what would that then be end of cycle sorry the end of in, rise and end yeah, of cycle yeah, yeah in maths are really really handy uh, your GNT also handles that well, so that's another great comment uh, there as yeah, well. Great. Oh, geez, any and, of these three-letter acronyms, I always, oh, it's always a thing. Yeah, the EOC throws me too because to me that that's end of fall. I mean, there's yeah. end of end of rise um, and end of fall, um, but the EOR can be confusing because it can be end of release too. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it gets. It, I'm only Another interested accident. in RTM, so yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, oh, perfect. Yeah, and I, um, uh, Brian there, R Robots Are Red, is actually, he's got the G&T module now. He's working on, he's got some pretty creative patches going. Um, I'm anxious to see how they turn out. <laughs> awesome. Looking forward to that as well. Uh, make sure that you um, link it in the, uh, in the description here as well, Robots Are, are Red. And I'll make sure to link to it uh, when we release this interview to uh, to YouTube as well, so we can uh, make sure of that. Thanks so much. Uh, so he's already saying he's uploading the video tonight. So uh, uh, if you uh, <laughs> if you make sure, I'll, I'll I'll point our audience to that as well. Um, that being said, Lenny, uh, this has been a a fantastic evening for me, um, and thanks so much for even while you're in Barcelona of all places, taking your time out of your busy schedule to, uh, to talk to me and, um, and the audience here. Um, any, any sort of closing wisdoms you want to instill upon our, our audience? Uh, I don't know if it's any wisdom, um, but I will uh, just uh, remind everybody, I guess, because uh, it's one of the big things that we strive to do in our daily lives and just want to kind of remind everybody of um, um, trying to 
uh, find ways um, uh, within this community that we have to be sure that we're supporting all of our underrepresented minorities. So looking for ways to support businesses uh, from uh, people of color or uh, women-owned businesses um, mm -hmm. and within the modular space in particular. Um, and just want to encourage everybody um, to look for ways uh, to support those businesses because, um, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's been an, an important thing on, on that, that we aim to do. And I uh, just want to remind everybody to, that that's important um, and just encourage everybody to, to uh, maintain that focus. Yeah. Oh, perfect. No, and I tr appreciate that. And I think that that's something that we can all... Um, embrace and make sure that we focus on as well and um yeah. thank you so much for uh, for bringing that into this yeah because thank i think that that's something yeah. that we need to be more aware of also in this show no, so superb superb um that being said it does leave me with just one more thing and that is to wish <laughs> you a very enjoyable time in barcelona in london in reykjavik and then, of course, in New York after that. And um, we'll be in touch when you're back in Seattle. Lenny, awesome. it's been an honor Sounds and good. a privilege. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks so much, Jesper. This was fun. Perfect. And for everyone else who's listening, either live or uh, to the recording, uh, this has been a presentation of the Modular Clubhouse. Uh, we do interviews, live Q&As, um, we try to do that well we i however you want to call that um every week we might do some maybe more than one uh, per week we might skip a week here or there but we do want to offer a continuous stream of well knowledge share and um, uh, thought leadership when it comes to uh, eurorack modular synthesizers and music production in general so let me just quickly check what we have in store for next week. So next week we are actually joined uh, by Erica Sintz. So that's gonna be another great one. And I hope everyone is able to join for that. That's gonna be on Tuesday. And again, that's at, at 2200 hours CET. And um, I've, I've learned today that, that that means that that will be 5 p.m. Eastern U.S. time and uh, what was it again? Uh, 2 p.m. Pacific Oops. time, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and it's I'll, just for uh, next yeah. week. It's and just then, for next yeah. week and then the week after it goes back to the adding one to both of those. Then we're back in one. sync. Then we're back in sync yeah. altogether. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. Um, Again, please everyone, in the meantime, please stay safe, stay healthy. And if there's anything you can do uh, to support uh, the companies that that Lenny just pointed out, uh, make sure that you do so. Um, I would also ask if you are in any way capable of, ha uh, of ha helping any of the refugees coming in from the Ukraine, uh, please do so as well. Um, I'm fortunate that we have a refugee center right around the corner of where I live and we're doing what we can do but if you have the same uh, ability please do so and um, let's make sure that through any of the capabilities that we have to uh, end any bloodshed and any sort of conflict and as I always said let's thrive for world peace right that's one other thing so yeah Perfect. Absolutely. Thanks so much, everyone. Cheers.